Hello students, welcome back to OCM lectures. Students, I now you have come down to 12th standard and it is very important here for your life, isn't it? Um, parents, teachers, for the whole year they will say the same thing, it's very important for you to study in 12th, it's very important for you to score good marks, right? So all the subjects in commerce, all the subjects in Maharashtra board, commerce uh, uh, study schedule, it's all important for you all, right? One of the subjects which I would be taking for you all is OCM, that is Organization of Commerce and Management. Students in 11th standard, uh, you must be introduced about what is Organization of Commerce and Management. Organization, this subject include two things, one is commerce and one is management. That means, commerce means it all related to the trade part which you have done in the 11th standard, right? What are the policies, what are uh, the different, what actually trade is, what is actually commerce is, you have seen. Trade means only buying and selling, but when you talk about auxiliary to trades, you find out that the trade would include not only buying and selling, but includes all the services, right? This all services would include about banking, you can say here, right? You can say it includes insurance. You can say it also includes the part of uh, warehousing and etc. Right? So here we have studied in 11th standard about the trade, the commerce and even we have studied a small part of management in that. What is management? Now we will see in detail in 12th standard. Right? But management when we say we have studied in 11th standard about the management that is introduction to the management and we talked about that management include in 11th we talked about the levels of management which we did, right? And we also talked about whether the management is related to art, science or profession. Actually, uh, management is a mixture of art, science and profession. So you can see that in 12th also we will be talking about the same thing, right? But in a different way. Now let me introduce you what are the chapters in the organization of commerce are. When we talk about uh, organization of commerce, you have in OCM subject, you have eight chapters, right? You have eight chapters. Now according to the new course, you cannot say that this chapter is important, this chapter is not important, you have to do all the chapters. So make it a note that when we talk about the OCM, you need to complete how many chapters? You have eight chapters in it. And when we talk about the first chapter in the OCM, we'll be saying that we need to read or we need to learn about the principles of management. Right? Now, under this chapter, we will be discussing about the different principles given by different, uh, you can say, economists or the, uh, you, we generally say them as father of uh, commerce or father of business, right? So we'll be talking about the principle given by two people over here, right? We'll be learning about the two principles given by Henry Fiol. They were the father of management and tax, right? And second, we will be studying about the scientific management given by F.W. Taylor. Right? Again, when we talk about the second chapter, it also includes the management part and it is the most important chapter in your course that is functions of management.
We'll be studying about organizing parts. Right? We'll be talking about directing. Sorry, stopping. Then we'll talk about directing. Then we'll talk about the part of cooperation. And we will be talking about one more function that is controlling. Right? Again, when we see uh, the third chapter, what we about the uh, response, we can say that it is uh, related to commerce itself that a person who wants to open his own business, right? Like in India, we have a lot of unemployment problem, right? We have a biggest problem in India is unemployment, right? So to overcome this problem of unemployment, entrepreneurship development programs are being worked. What is an entrepreneurship? Or what is an entrepreneur? A person who opens his own business. Now, the person who wants to open a business, they have schemes given by the government so that they can avail those schemes, right? So, in this third chapter is about entrepreneurship development. Businessmen 
do cheat with the consumers or the consumers have different problems towards the different products or different companies. So where they can complain, how they can complain, this is being studied under the consumer protection chapter. The eighth chapter, that is the last one, is again important that when you start with a business, when you start producing a particular product, then how that product need to be marketed. That is the different activities which we done, which we do under the heading of marketing. Right? So we'll talk about the marketing part where we talk about the seven P's of marketing here. And this is the most important, you can say again an important chapter in your course. Right? So basically in the whole OCM subject we will be talking about the eight chapters. Right? Moving on to the first chapter students. Requires 
more attention from my side. Good subject requires more, uh, you can say, practices. This is what? This is planning. But when I talk about the organizing part, then in that moment, that is from the starting, I need to arrange the things. That is organizing the things. Arrangement of the things. Arrangement of the things means where I need to arrange with the notes. If I'm talking about 12th standard, I need to arrange the notes for me. Right? I need to collect it from my seniors. I need to collect it from the different websites or maybe from the coaching classes or training. Maybe from the schools. This is how I need to organize my things. I need to organize my time also. The arrangement of time, of material is known to be as organization. So in an organization also, in a management, in a business also, what we do is we try to plan out the things. That is, I decide my goals over here. Right? According to the goals, I need to do the arrangement. That is, time, material I need to arrange. Right? Again, I have arranged with the materials, I have arranged with the staff of my organization, but as a management, as a manager, what I need to do is, I need to direct the people. Direct the people towards what? Towards achieving Right? Henry 
put in 7 in numbers, alright, and he has given us 14 principles. Now, as I said, principle management principles are in there. But what is principle? Let us know that first. Principles in general parlance, which we say, it is it is said to be a kind of a, you can say a set of rules and regulations, right? Universal 
organization what they do is they do management they do apply management principles but these principles are universally accepted universally accepted means whether my organization is small or it is big right whether my organization is within the country or outside the country that is or in foreign countries still all these principles are applicable everywhere so in small activities of the management of the business principles are applicable and they are known to be as universal applicability right that is whether my organization is small or big i need to do management and when i do the management i require management principles right when we we'll talk about the principles later then you will get to know more better right when i say new new stands for universal application that is management principles are used all over the world whether my organization is small or big it has been used i give you an example of one principle i say in my house even or in your house even your parents must have divided the work even you as a family member every family member have, must have divided some work right mother must be uh, maybe she is a homemaker so she would be doing the household work you as a student as a child you would do the some of the other outside work also for the mother or for the uh, household work also for mother even father is working outside so he would be doing the work outside more of the outer works he would be uh, preferring to do so these kind of what i have done is i have taken a total work i have divided into sub parts my whole family is doing different works right so these smaller sub parts are my work which individually do similarly same thing which we do in the organization that is the total work is being divided into sub parts right this is one of the principle which is applicable everywhere right even in the construction site if you go in the construction construction site also few things are being done by the laborers few things are being done by the contractors few things are being done by us and the different people right so every people have their own part of work to do right here that is what is being said management principle are universally accepted now again when we talk about the part of g it stands for it is known to be as general guidelines
it has an effect. For example, I take an example of the organization or teaching organization. Take our example as a college. We know that we are commerce teachers, right? As an individual, I won't be able to teach all the subject at one time, right? So what we do is we divide the work amongst the other teachers also. So this is how that every principle which you apply, it will have some cause and it will have some effect. That is, whenever a management principle is being applied in any organization, in organization, it will have some cause Right? Some reason to happen so or some reason for it to be applicable and when it is being applied, it will have an effect. Right? This effect can be good or it can be bad. That is, it all depends on what? It depends on the behavior of Will act 
or react, right? That is, behavior also have a bigger uh, effect. But if the principle are flexible, then it will always be a beneficial for an organization. Like, uh, if I am very good in teaching you OCM, if my organization provides me a chance to teach you on OCM, my efficiency for teaching an uh, OCM will be more. But if I'm not good in uh, teaching you accounts, my efficiency for teaching the accountancy or the theory, the concept of accountancy will be less. So according to the human being, according to the situation, the management principles can be changed. That is why it has been said that all management principles are flexible in nature according to the situation it changes. Right? The next one and the last one is F formed by I hope you have understood this much. This is the nature 